Today I'm gonna to try and make chocolate chip cookies. And um, let's hope that they turn out good. I've done a little bit of research and grabbed a whole bunch of different recipes from different people and I've put it all together and picked the things that I like from each recipe. So here we go. Okay, so some of the equipment that you're gonna need, you're gonna need somewhere to make your cookies. You're gonna need some sort of a scoop so you have the same size um, cookie that you're making. A spatula, a whisk, which you may or may not use, cutting board, a little pot for browning your butter, a bowl, some greaseproof paper, and if you have a hand mixer, that will be helpful. And now I'm also gonna tell you about the ingredients that we're gonna use, not in this order though. So it's gonna be some pecans, I'm gonna roast these, I'm gonna put them on the flat tray and then kinda of roast them, brown them a little bit in the oven. Careful not to burn them. And then I've got my flour, I've got I'm using two cups of flour. So I've got bread flour and all-purpose flour. If you don't have bread flour, don't sweat it. You can just use all-purpose flour. A bit of salt, some baking powder. I also need some baking soda, which I haven't brought out yet, but I will have. And some white sugar, some brown sugar, some, uh, this is my butter, which unfortunately I've already browned, but I'll tell you how to do that. Some vanilla, my chocolate chips and the bar of dark chocolate here. And also you need an egg and uh, egg and an egg yolk. Oh, and espresso powder. So I'm gonna open this up and see what that looks like. Hopefully that'll be good enough for me to use. And coffee. I'm gonna use some coffee in my thing. Okay, so the pecans, I'm gonna roast them in the oven about 350. I'm putting it on convection so that it can be a little bit quicker. Um, but I'll probably put them in there for um, about five minutes. Okay, so for the melted butter, what I did is I put one cup of butter in my pot and then I kind of let it boil. And once it starts like boiling all over, you see it starts going brown. You really want to stay there because you don't want to burn it. Once you get a nice golden color, then take it off the um, take it off the stove and put it in a jug like this one because you need about one cup of it. Now, as you can see here, I don't actually have a cup because some of it has has kind of boiled off. So I'm gonna top it up with coffee because you know coffee always puts a nice flavor with chocolate, right? So I've got some coffee and all this stuff is at room temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna top it up so I have now a full one cup. So you don't, and I don't wanna tell you how much coffee to put in because it depends how much of your butter evaporated. But anyway, that's ready to go. So I got that then. Okay, so here I've sifted all the dry ingredients, which is the flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. Um, and I've just all sifted it together, just my dry ingredients and I've chopped up my chocolate. And while chopping up my chocolate, I realized I didn't actually get dark chocolate, I got milk chocolate. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, um, if you want dark chocolate, that'll be good. I do have different types of chocolate chips here, so hopefully that will add um, the flavor to that. Okay, so my pecans have been in there for about five minutes and they're looking a little bit dark. I need to take them out now because I don't want them to, to burn darker now. I'm gonna let them cool and um, then I'm gonna chop them up into small little pieces. Okay so let's get started. So I'm gonna put in my cup of brown sugar and my espresso powder which is one teaspoon and white sugar half a cup and let's put some of the vanilla so I would say about maybe two teaspoons thereabouts you know I like to eyeball this. And that's, uh, yeah, that's about right. And um, I'm going to mix this up. Okay, and then I'm going to put the, the butter in there. Put the butter and I put a little bit of um, that coffee in there. All the brown stuff and the bottom is really good. You want all that stuff in there. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, now I'm gonna mix this up by making a mix. Woo! Here we go. Okay, so that 
makes that pretty good and it's not very um, thick. So I'm gonna put in my eggs now. So remember this is one full egg and then just the yolk of the second egg. I hear that makes it extra fudgy. Who doesn't like a fudgy cookie? Mix that up in there. Now, this is the part where I was saying, you know, if you didn't have a hand mixer, you could just use your whisk to mix it, which would be fine too. And then now I'm gonna add my flour in, which I've sifted together all the dry ingredients. I spoke about that earlier, I'm just gonna scoop it in with this. Go in like small amounts at a time. Mix that on there. And by the way, I've preheated my oven. By the way, I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I be believe in Celsius that's about 180. Oh, double check that. I think that's correct. Somewhere. Mix that all in. Oh yeah. And that cookie dough. Okay, so next is I'll put in my chocolate chips. Okay, so um, now I've got my pecans that I've um, roasted a bit. It brings out the flavor more and I've chopped them up into small little pieces. I know there's some big ones in there, but it's always so nice when you bite into it big piece of bacon. Okay, so we're gonna mix this in. So I'm gonna put um, my pecans in here. So this is about two cups of pecans that I've put in there. I'm just gonna fold that in. Oh, it smells really good though. Mm. And then also, I'm gonna put my chocolate chips. So remember that those um, chocolate chips that we cut into tiny little pieces? Well, it's so that you get all these little tiny pieces in your chocolate cookie everywhere. So there you are. And I'm gonna put a couple of these chocolates because everybody likes a really chocolatey. And the darker ones in there. And then we'll fold all this in. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And then um, on the side, I've um, lined my tray with um, non-stick um, wax paper. Well, wax paper, I guess it's non-stick. But if you don't have like that non-stick wax paper, you can just, you know, butter it up, you know, old school style. That should work too. Okay, so you see how it's all nicely mixed in? And then we're gonna scoop it. We're gonna scoop it into our shapes. I don't know why I said shapes. We're gonna scoop it into um, little balls, right? That we're gonna put on our cookie dough. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I'm just scooping them. I'm putting them into um, this tray. As you can see right now, I'm putting them really close to each other, trying to make them all the same size. <laughs> but, um, so I'm putting them close to each other because they're gonna go in the fridge for a few hours and then they're gonna be really hard so that way you can move them around without getting too much dough on your fingers. And I know you're probably tempted to get dough on your fingers so you can lick it, but that's gross. Nobody wants to see the cook licking their fingers like that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of these, as many as I can on the tray, put it in the, in the fridge for a few hours, and then when it's all nice and hot, I'll probably bake a few of them on the tray at a time. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on doing this and I'll show you what next. Okay, so all the, I've scooped all the cookies onto here and I'm going to put them in the fridge for a couple of hours and they'll get really hard and then you can actually move them off and bake a few at a time. So probably let's say about two hours they'll be in the fridge and I'll check on them to see if they, they've gone nice and hard. Hi. 
So, okay, so the cookies have been in the fridge for about two and a half hours and they're really nice and cold now. And what I'm gonna do, let me flick on the lights over here. Okay, so you know now, you see now they're all nice and solid and hard. So I'm gonna split them up between these two pans. You gotta give them a bit of room because the pan, you know, they like to spread out when they cook. So I'm gonna do, I think six on this tray. Six on this tray and then I'll do six on the other tray. So I'm gonna put the extra ones over here. So you're gonna cook these at 350 degrees, um, which is about 180. And, um, sorry, 350 Fahrenheit, right? Spread these ones around a bit. For 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on it, right? If, you know, because sometimes things don't cook as, as slow as we are thinking. So I would keep an eye on it. Yeah, let me see if I can get more than six on this one. Maybe I'll regret this, but let's try. Okay, yeah, maybe I could get a little more than six on this one too. Let's put that there. Yeah, so I'm gonna bake this so the oven has been ready to go. I've got some potatoes in there that I was cooking already. Which are done. Ooh, lovely roasted potatoes and I'll put these in. One, two, and we're gonna cook these for 15 minutes. Let's put the timer on and I'll keep checking anyway. Before that, I'll look through the glass. Okay. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. I'm gonna take them out. Oh yeah. Over here. Take the other one out as well. Okay, so they're out. I'm just gonna gently get them off this tray and put them on here to cool. Because I need to put the next batch in. And if you want to get a little more color on the top, you could probably put the boil on for a couple of you know, you really have to watch if you're doing with the broil. You know, I would just put it on for a little bit and watch it the whole time. Then you can get the top golden as well. And I need to use my, I need to use my cookie tray for the last batch. So, there they are, cooling. And I've got one more batch in the oven, but man, they really look good and smell amazing. And so nice and soft in the middle. And the pecans and the chocolate just go together so wonderfully. Haha. <laughs> mmm. Let's hope these will last the night. <laughs>